What is a crazy history fact that sounds like a time traveler was involved in? The July bomb plot. Someone tried to assassinate Hitler with a bomb in a suitcase. He placed the suitcase next to Hitler and left with the intention of detonating it. Someone at the meeting moved the suitcase so it was behind a table leg which meant that the table absorbed the force of the explosion and Hitler survived. Two time travelers. One trying to kill Hitler. The other one knowing it would be a far grimmer future. They were the same person. And they trained each other. One of H.G. Wells' short stories, a character is amazed that someone is able to place a smaller rectangular object into a receiver in their wall, and then watch a pre-recorded program on a screen. He basically described the VHS tape in the 1920s. Albert Einstein fundamentally rewrote the law of gravity, almost single-handedly. His general relativity has withstood every test since. The person that solved the world math problem for homework without realizing. George Danzig is who you're looking for. He came to class late one day and copied down the two statistics problems on the board. He missed the teacher's prior discussion on how they were as yet unsolved and thought they were homework. Strictly speaking, he wasn't solving problems. They were postulates which he was able to prove. I don't know which theorems they are. The Minoans had flush toilets in the 15th century BC. A man wrote a book about a boat called the Titan being hitting an iceberg in the exact same area of sea as the Titanic, which was not very strong only a couple years before the Titanic sunk. It goes way deeper than that. The book was written almost 15 years before the sinking of the Titanic, and in the book, several things that actually happened with the Titanic happened to Titan, including 1. Location in the North Atlantic, 400 miles east of Newfoundland. 2. Traveling between New York to England. 3. Thought to be unsinkable because of its watertight compartments. 4. Traveled in excess of 22 knots before hitting the iceberg. 5. Didn't even have enough lifeboats for half of its 3,000 passengers. 6. Gross tonnage was 45,000 tons and was almost 900 feet long. 7. Sunk after colliding with an iceberg on the starboard side. 8. A majority of the passengers died. It's tough for me to believe in time travel, but if I had to pick out one person in history who could have been a time traveler, I'd be hard-pressed to not pick Morgan Robertson, the author of Futility, or The Wreck of the Titan. TBH if you learn about physics and when physicists had their theories or even proved them, then it feels like witchcraft. Like mostly everything was done in the early 20th century, or even earlier, and we started to develop the ideas or even prove them hundred years later. A lot of them couldn't prove anything as they were limited by the technology of their time, but they still had theories that were proved very late, or even late after their death. They also intensely debated the metaphysical side of reality they were uncovering in their discoveries and took those ideas very seriously in the early 20th century until the atom bomb and world war put all those conversations on the back burner, and they never returned. The Curious Case of Peter Power and the anti-terrorism training exercise which involved five simulated bombings of five London underground train stations which took place at exactly the same time and at exactly the same stations as the actual bombings on July 7, 2005. Power later described this as a spooky coincidence. It's likely the training locations were picked for the same reason the bomb locations were picked. A bomb there would be a big problem. Basically the only coincidence is the timing then. My answer is the story about the guy who invented the saxophone, who almost died like five times during his life before the time of the invention. Sax faced many brushes with death. Over the course of his childhood, he fell from a height of three floors, hit his head on a stone, and could barely stand afterwards. At the age of three, drank a bowl full of acidic water and later swallowed a pin. Burned himself seriously in a gunpowder explosion. Fell onto a hot cast iron frying pan burning his side. Survived an accidental poisoning from keeping varnished items in his bedroom during the night. Was hit on the head by a rock. Fell into a river and nearly died. His mother once said that. He's a child condemned to misfortune. He won't live. His neighbors called him. Little Sax, the ghost. There was a case in Alaska in 1989. A police officer was stopped by a citizen who told him about a man running down the road with no clothes on. 
As the officer arrived in the area of the McDonald's restaurant on Empty View Drive, he saw the man running through the parking lot, then climb up a center flagpole all the way to the top and looked around as if he was surveying the area. The officer called up to him, but did not get a response. The man then let go and fell to the ground. The police were never able to find his clothing or figure out from where he came. The autopsy showed no drugs in his system. Fingerprints were sent out to all states, FBI and Canada with negative results. If you're into music theory and classical music, listen to Don Carlo Gesualdo. This guy was doing musical stuff nobody would even consider until many hundreds of years later. The tonality he used in particular wasn't seen until the 19th century. Absolutely wild stuff that's both a bitch and beautiful to sing. All the unsuccessful assassination attempts on Hitler. A lot of people say they'd go back in time and kill Hitler if they had a time machine. Many have tried. Many have failed. Hitler is inevitable. The day Archduke Franz Ferdinand was assassinated there had already been an attempt against his life that he escaped. So one of the would-be assassins decided to cheer himself up by getting a sandwich at his favorite sandwich place. And then the Archduke's driver took a wrong turn and stopped to check his map right in front of that sandwich shop. Suffice it to say, that assassin did not pass up the second chance. Actually, the assassin didn't show up to that sandwich place to cheer himself up. He was well aware that the Archduke's vehicle would pass through that road. It was actually supposed to happen anyway, but the problem is that the Archduke's driver was an Austrian and didn't know Sarajevo properly, and when the Archduke wanted to visit the hospital the driver took a rather wrong turn which ironically matched the original route that he was supposed to take instead of the easy route to hospital. There was this dude, Samuel Zeme, who migrated to Alabama from Russia in 1891. He started out his career buying bananas that were considered too ripe from a company that had big demand on the new banana market in the States. Long story short, he became more and more successful until the point where he became a giant in the fruit business, outcompeting even United Fruit. In 1912, entirely for personal purposes of expanding his banana empire, he was a key player in overthrowing the Honduran government which happened so the United States could have economic control over the country and drain their wealth and resources. Zeme himself of course really benefited from this. I forgot the exact details though. Around 40 years later, he did the same thing in the U.S. coup against Guatemala, when Guatemala tried to take back their own land that the U.S. had a banana plantation on. I read a book about Zeme, the fish who ate the whale, a few years ago, and more recently read Overthrow a book on various coups orchestrated by the United States from 1890 to around 2000. So yeah, basically a random Russian kid showed up on the scene out of nowhere, kicked everyone's ass in the free market, and even fucked over other countries so he could be the banana king. He was objectively a shitty person, but I am floored by how damn efficient he was. United Fruit in general is such a dark stain on US history. Who knows how many people died for fucking bananas? About the story written by Edgar Allan Poe where a sailor named Richard Parker is cannibalized by members of the crew after they are shipwrecked, and then like twenty years later a cabin boy named Richard Parker was murdered and cannibalized by his crew after their ship was shipwrecked. Isaac Asimov's correctly predicted the PC would move from behind mainframes to become so small and common to fit in a watch, and then back to highly centralized servers you could connect to using a high-speed communication network. Most nuclear accidents that were a near miss, both military and civil. It feels like every time an accident was about to happen, someone from the future had traveled back in time and prevented it. Every single time. Example, airplanes dropping nukes by mistake over the US, with six out of seven failsafes failing except for one. Various reactors accidents that despite fatal, turned out to be not as bad as they could have, Chernobyl being an exception. Reminds me of the idea that the world has ended multiple times already since the invention of the nuclear bomb, but people keep going back in time to stop it, and now we live in a really weird timeline. That one story of the guy who experienced an air raid 11 years before it occurred. Journalist J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were sent by a German newspaper to do a story on the Hamburg shipyard in 1932. It was an uneventful visit until the bombs began raining down on them. Hutton and Brandt realized they were caught in the middle of an air raid and hightailed it out of there. 
but not before snapping some photographs. When they got back to the center of Hamburg, no one believed their story. They developed the photos they took, intending to prove to everyone that they weren't crazy. In fact, they proved the opposite. The photos showed no signs of an air raid. Eleven years later, Hutton was living in London when he opened up a newspaper and probably nearly spit his coffee across his desk. There was a story about Operation Gamara, an air raid on Hamburg. The accompanying photos looked exactly like what he had experienced in 1932. More like a matrix glitch than time travel. The map of the New Hemisphere, drawn up in either the 1400s or 1500s, which included the Antarctic. The North and South America part of the map is pretty accurate, but the Antarctic part of the map was way off. It looked nothing like the way the Antarctic is really shaped, or so we thought. Antarctic is a contingent of ice, which is miles thick, going from the surface of the ocean to the land below it. NASA satellite images showing things below the surface indicate that this map of Antarctica does not show the shape of the ice on the surface, as we see it, but instead is an accurate map of the ground miles below the surface of the ice. On Julius Caesar's way to the Senate meeting some guy in the crowd tried to break through and tell Caesar not to go he will be killed Caesar apparently heard him but was not worried since he was pretty cocky at that point. There's almost no way a commoner would be able to know about the plot or when and where it was going to happen the reason for him wanting to stop it could be since if Caesar lived he may have conquered the Parthians and invade Britain and probably united much of the world or something. What are some other facts you know? Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one.